ping the code lab link. Uh, Kiran, if you can ping that again, it'll be great because I saw a couple of folks join afterwards. So just ping the code lab link, um, which we'll be going through today. So this code lab is um, built in collaboration with another. Um, so I built the project idea and the entire uh, design for this. Uh, I worked with another um, engineer in Google, Saranj Ding Ding Dingra, Dingra, to build the user user interface for it, um, just to give it a new look because um, we thought it'll be a good demo um, to showcase. And even if learners are using this to build on their own, this could be a good starting point. So that's why. All right. So the recording has just begun. Let's get started. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining Code Vipassana Season 4, Session 2. Uh, in today's session, we'll be uh, continuing to look at generative AI-themed applications centered around data, databases, and a full-stack application. Uh, so for today's uh, application, we will use Java Spring Boot as a framework. Um, so what is, before diving into that, what is Code Vipassana? It is a program which is a series of, ses a series of um, uh, hands-on sessions. Uh, which are grouped as seasons in a specific theme uh, to build hands-on applications and use cases and to empower developers, community developers, learners, and practitioners uh, with technology and uh, Google Cloud, particularly powered by Google Cloud services, um, so to enable the developers to build on their own, to um, also learn and continue in the learning trajectory for people who want to switch careers or people who want to learn new things or people who just want to understand the foundations of not just cloud computing, but also um, app development, data, databases, AI, ML, generative AI, DevOps. So many different themes, all centered around um, the cloud computing concepts and using Google Cloud services. Right. So season four, we have had three seasons so far. This is season four. And in season four, we are focusing on data to generative AI journey and building individual unique use cases um, centered around databases and generative AI. When I say databases, we will use database as part of the use case. We will use uh, generative AI APIs to generate um, content. Like yesterday, we did. Uh, we used SQL queries to generate uh, in Big. Not yesterday on Monday, we used SQL queries in BigQuery to generate uh, summary text summary. Today, we'll use um, Imagine API to generate images. But the data will be coming from Spanner database, which is another Google Cloud relational database management system. Um, so each session will be like that. If each session each session is independent of the other, which means you will build full unique applications in each specific session. So you don't have to worry about continuity. And uh, please note that um, HTTPS code vipassana dot dev has all the material that you need. It has all the code labs. It has all the recordings of each session. And it also has the form where you have to submit the results. So just make sure you are able, you have access to that. You, you know what the link is. You can find all the information there. All right, so let's get started. I'm sharing my screen. I hope you all have landed on the Code Labs uh, for today's. If not, go to codebypassana.dev, and it will take you to this page. Um, and if you scroll down, you will see this is from the top. If you scroll down, you'll see day two. And against day two, you will see data to generative AI with Spanner and Vertex AI Imagine API. So this is the lab uh, zone application we are going to build today. Recording link for, yes, uh, for the first session uh, from Monday has been made available already. So uh, take a look at that later. Look at that later. So today we'll uh, use we'll do this particular project. So right click and open it in a new tab. Uh, the code lab opens here with an introduction. And you'll see the high-level flow diagram. I'm going to explain what we're going to do here in the next couple of minutes, and then we'll dive right in. All right. So what we'll do today in this code lab, uh, in this next 40 minutes, is that we'll build an AI-powered post generator app. So you'll generate uh, poses um, using Java Spring Boot framework application that we'll build. And we'll use Cloud Spanner as a database that populates some drop-down list of texts. Just don't worry about what it takes to test for now. Just imagine that Google Cloud's Cloud Spanner database is going to power your application. It is going to provide the data for your application. And what we are going to use in order to generate the poses or generate the images for that matter is Vertex AI's Imagine API. Um, now, why we are generating, what is generative AI, what is Imagine API? So all these questions you'll be getting. So I'll explain that. Um, before jumping into this architecture diagram. So uh, as we discussed in the first session, I'm going to just give a one-liner for each. You all know what a software development is, like programming and other things started with just 
um, explaining things rule based, right? You will have a bunch of rules. You will build an application in a certain way that you want the machine to behave um, like, right? So that's what you'll build application for. This is all rule based. Um, then came machine learning and artificial intelligence. Machine learning is where you'll train the machine uh, to understand, observe, and learn the pattern and predict things, forecast things, uh, label things, or classify things, or cluster things for you. Rather than you programming that by rules or storing the rules somewhere, you train the machine to identify those labels or classify or predict or forecast or so on and so forth for you. Now, giving data and training the machine to do something is what machine learning is. And then we came AI, or not then, it's not a sequence, it's not a sequence, but around the same time, we also had the advent of AI, which is having a human element to it, where uh, you're not just training the machine, but you're also interfacing or interacting with the real world uh, object or real world person or real world thing or real world data. That's where AI comes into picture, like vision, videos, or um, interacting with sensor data or interacting with human data, like your heartbeat and stuff like that, right? So interacting with real world objects and things where it has a human touch or a real world touch is where uh, AI took us to. Then we are now talking about generative AI, which is simply, in simple terms, simply put, it is nothing but asking the machine to generate content for you. What kind of content? It could be anything, any modality, text, um, it could be images, it could be audio, it could be video. You could ask us uh, ask it to create uh, some uh, some a combination of those, whatever it is, right? So basically, generating content based on uh, some instructions that you provide is what um, generative AI is. Now, um, are we going to train the machine to do it? No. But are we going to provide data? Yes, you still have to provide some data. You can provide some context. You can fine tune your response. You can fine tune. Uh, the 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 model itself to say that you want a response in a certain way, but you don't necessarily train the model to uh, to act or behave in a certain way. The model is already trained on tens of hundreds of billions of parameters and petabyte scale data in order to provide uh, or uh, generate the content that you need. So that's what generative AI is, the large language model is. So why is it like it's called language model? So does it mean I can't have any other format? Only language format is allowed? No, anything which is text or audio or video. Ultimately, the if it is converted into a numeric format, ultimately everything can be compared as a um, in language, right? Like let's say I upload a video and I ask questions about the video. What do you what what does it mean underlying? Is it a language format in the video? Or is is the video um, what do you mean? Is is the video a form of text? No, the video is a video. It has actions. It has motion. It has images, or it, or it has frames per second. Whatever it is, whatever however you want to quantify or qualify a video, you can. But it's definitely more than text, right? So does it mean large language model only deals with text, which is a common misconception? That's not what it is. Yes, of course. It, if you have text, it it is straightforward. It will just um answer respond to your questions but if it's another formats you will either convert it in a way like embeddings like a numerical form and generate content that is specific to your um question that you're asking from the data that you're providing or in certain cases if it is able to handle the model as it is it will just answer questions from the video so collectively it's called a large language model different large language models are available so uh, we will use google cloud's vertex ai which is a suite of all the apis it's a collection of all the APIs which uh, from the ML, AI, and generative AI uh, services or AI categories in Google Cloud, right? That is all collected under one umbrella, which is Vertex AI. So does it have only Google's foundational models? No, it, is also, it, it also houses a lot of other open source uh, models which are, uh, which are available today. So those are also made available under Vertex AI umbrella. Uh, what we'll use today, though, is Google's one of the one of Google's uh, models for generating images. Not just generating, dealing with images. It can read an image and provide captions or edit an image. For now, right? And also, it also can uh, generate images. There's also multiple versions which are more advanced than this that has that has come up. But we'll use the one that we've used in this particular code lab, which I used to build it probably a few weeks ago, uh, specifically developed for this particular season. So everything that we are learning in the season is new and uh, new in the sense it's built for the season so you're not uh, uh, you, you're learning up to date content so you can be uh, sure about that all right so this is the background now let's dive right into the list of services used like i already said we'll use cloud spanner as the relational database management system to provide some aspect of the data to this application 
uh, we'll use Vertex AI's Imagine API, which is the API that we'll use to generate the images. Uh, because I already said we are going to build an AI-powered post generator app, right? We want to generate poses. You're, you're going to ask the machine to generate a puppy doing a yoga pose or puppy doing a child's pose, right? So it has to de deliver an image, generate an image like a puppy is doing a downward dog or puppy is doing a child's pose that's what we want to do with this application so cloud run is a serverless solution service that we will use to deploy our application serverlessly right without writing a bunch of code it's just a point of um, one command which will help you deploy your application to make your application run on the cloud as a rest api so that's what we'll use cloud run for so the high level flow diagram as you can see in step one in this code lab uh, introduction page so as I said, we will build two applications. The first one is the spanner data as a service. So this is a service API, which will expose the data that is away that we'll create in this particular database as a REST endpoint. Okay, so you'll just click that endpoint and you'll see the data in a get call, that's it. So for that, we'll build a server application and we'll build another application, which is a client app, which will access that server application to get some data, which is not, which is not the main focus here. The main focus here is a generative AI call which will happen in the client part, okay? So from the client, we'll make a REST API call to Vertex AI's Imagine API based on the data that is coming in from the server application and based on the data that the user is entering in the client app. So it will take these two together and make a call to Vertex AI's Imagine API by passing this together as a prompt. And this Vertex AI's Imagine API will return an image as a base64 encoded string you will see how this string looks, okay? And then you will use uh, this particular string to directly expose it in the UI, UX to see the image. So this is the part we uh, built with the help of another uh, engineer, Saranj. So he built the UX part, he's really good at it and uh, it, it looks really cool. The colors and the uh, pattern, the, the way the application looks is really nice now. I like the UX, um, I hope you do too. All right, so this is what we are going to build. Show of thumbs, is everyone excited? Everyone has your code labs up and running? Are we all set to go? Yeah. All right, just a second. Okay, um, I request everyone to mute and also turn off the cameras. I also did that so that there's no interruption um, while we get started. So I hope you all can see my screen. So let's move on to step two of the code lab, which is requirements. So like I said before, I hope you all have your Google Cloud credits enabled using the link that was sent to you when you signed up. If not, the link is there in the chat. Uh, only those who have not never used this link before can use this and access the five dollar credits if you've already redeemed it that's fine you still have the credits in your account you can continue to do this don't have to worry um all right so when you're ready go to console.cloud.google.com if you access the link to generate credits it will automatically land you here in console.cloud.google.com leads if you can just ping this link console.cloud.google.com in the chat it'll be really great Thank you. All right, make sure you're able to see console.cloud.google.com. This should, it should open up like this. And once it's open, make sure you're able to see the project ID here. If not, draw, click the drop down. If this is not showing any projects, uh, make sure everyone's Thank you. Um, so as you can see here, if there is no project listed in the top left corner, make sure you click, click the drop down, click new project, and then set it up by just providing a project name. You can leave everything else with default values. Don't change anything, hit create. And once you create it, um, assuming that you already have the billing enabled, it should be automatically linked. If it's not linked, click the billing, click the three lines in the top most, uh, left most corner, uh, before Google cloud logo, and you should see billing once you click that you should be able to see two options link a billing account and manage billing 
uh, whichever is applicable to you, click that and it will automatically show you which is the free credits link and you can associate that. So that should be straightforward and you should be good to go. All right, so once that is done, I'll just give you all a second to catch up. That is the first step for requirements. The second step is to enable APIs that we'll be using in this project. Show of thumbs, how many of you are able to get started? You can continue with the previous project. No need to create new project at all. Perfect. Let's get started. The next thing uh, in the same step, step number two, requirements. Under the section before you begin, you have point two. Make sure that billing is enabled, which is completed. Third step, which says make sure all the necessary APIs are enabled. Right click the enabled hyperlink, copy link address, and open it in a tab in the browser where you have the project open, right? Because if you're using multiple accounts, Google uh, Gmail accounts, then it might not work. So make sure you're opening this hyperlink in a tab where you have the inside the browser that where you have the Google Cloud Console project created. So copy paste that in the uh, in the tab and enter, you should be able to see enable access to APIs uh, pop up. And under that, you should see confirm project and the next button enabled. Click next. It says enable APIs. You have three APIs there, BigQuery API, BigQuery Connection API, and Vertex AI API. Although Spanner APIs are missing, but that's okay. Just say enable. We also have to enable Spanner and all that. Uh, let's see. Can you search for, uh, in point three itself, you have Spanner, Vertex, uh, Cloud Run, and Cloud Functions, right? So copy just Spanner from there and enter it in the search bar right here. Just search for Spanner. It should open Spanner in the dropdown. Uh, it should list Spanner in the dropdown. Click that and enable API. In my case, it's already enabled, so you won't see enable API. But in your case, if it's not enabled, it'll ask you to enable. Just click enable API. It's fairly straightforward. Open, uh, right click on the Google Cloud logo, open link in new tab, open another tab. And here in the search bar, search for cloud space functions. Um, e functions or run, sorry. Functions is not required. We'll use run, cloud space run. And you will see a drop down list with Cloud Run on the top of the list under products and pages. Click Cloud Run. Since it's the first time you're accessing this, it will ask you to enable this Cloud Run API. Enable Cloud Run API. Okay. In my case, it's already enabled, so you won't see it. All right. Moving on to the next step, which is activating Cloud Shell. This is also one of the important steps because we'll be doing a lot of things in Cloud Shell itself. So, what we'll do here is once again, right click on the Google Cloud logo and open link in new tab. We'll open another browser window, uh, sorry, browser tab. And what you'll do here is um, in the top, right next to the search bar, you see uh, an activate Cloud Shell icon. Hover over, over the first icon that you see after the search bar, which says activate Cloud Shell. Click that particular button and you should be able to see the terminal that's opening in the bottom of the uh, console. Click that line that you see on the top of the console and just drag it and drag. You should be able to get the terminal to cover the whole screen. Make sure you're able to see Cloud Shell terminal. So Cloud Shell is something that it's like a command prompt, which you use to interact with the services and all the fun all the um, um, all the different things that you want to interact with with the with the OS, right? If you say command prompt, same thing with Google Cloud. If you want to interact with all the services through commands, you can use Cloud Shell. So when you activate Cloud Shell, it opens up, it allocates a specific Cloud Shell, uh, certain amount of, um, with certain compute and storage, it allocates a specific Cloud machine to you, sorry, Cloud Shell machine to you. And along with that comes two utilities. One is the Cloud Shell terminal, and the other one is Cloud Shell editor. Now you have to also open Cloud Shell editor. You can just toggle between editor and Cloud Shell terminal just by clicking this button over here. You can toggle between that, but I don't advise it. I don't recommend it because for me, it looks more, um, it, it gives more clarity if I have it in two separate tabs. So what I usually do is I right click on the Google Cloud logo, open link, link in new tab again. And once I open it, 
I once again activate, click on activate cloud shell. And before it can load, I immediately click on open editor. So that way in one tab, I have open terminal, um, cloud shell terminal. And in other tab, I have cloud shell editor. If it accidents, accidentally says that your session was transferred to another browser tab, don't worry, just click reconnect. It'll just bring back the session to this terminal and make sure the other tab has the cloud shell editor open. Now, what is editor? What is terminal? These are both, uh, the, both are ways that you can interact with your cloud shell machine. Uh, you can interact with all the different services in Google Cloud. Terminal is where you execute commands and editor is where you edit your source code, your files, view files, uh, store files temporarily, whatever you want to do. It is like VS Code or Eclipse or any IDE that you'll use for programming. This is also a source editor. So that's what it allocates uh, when you open, when you activate Cloud Shell. So I hope you all have enabled APIs, open console, enabled APIs, activated Cloud Shell and open Cloud Shell editor. Uh, show of thumbs, please. If someone can help Manali uh, to enable Spanner, it'll be really great. You should be able to enable Spanner because enable it is, Spanner option is not there. If Spanner is open already without having to enable it, that's fine. You don't have to enable it. Spanner should not fail to load. So if you right click on Google Cloud, open another tab, make sure billing is associated to your account. That is important. Um, and then in the search bar, type Spanner and uh, click on Spanner. It should open up uh, Spanner just as you see right here. Just give me one second. Yeah. So you should see the create instance page. You should see Spanner. It should list all the instances you have. In your case, you might not have any instance. So you should see create instance button. Show of thumbs, how many of you are able to see that? Yeah, Ajay, thank you for sharing that link. Uh, sorry, command. So uh, you can use the command that Ajay has shared to enable Spanner. gcloud services enable spanner.googleapis.com. So copy that. Whoever is not able to enable Spanner, copy that. I'll paste it again in the chat. Copy that and go to your Cloud Shell terminal, which we just opened no? in one of the tabs, the black terminal uh, screen. So go there, make sure it's referring to your uh, project and paste the command that you copied here from the chat and hit enter. You should be able to enable. It'll ask you to authorize, just click authorize. Uh, make sure you're logged in. And then it'll enable the Spanner API. That's it. It's as simple as that. Thank you for sharing that, Ajay. Now, I hope everyone has done this step. Uh, show of thumbs. Let's move to the next step. Let's get into the project. Perfect. So let's just jump to step three, which is preparing data with Spanner. Like I said, in the introduction part, I said the first step is to create the service. Let's quickly create this in two minutes. So I challenge you to finish this step in two minutes, and then we'll... Uh, sync back to see how many of you are able to generate the REST API effectively and get this application to work. It's very simple. We are going to do it in the console only. We are going to prepare data. We are going to create a spanner instance, create a database, create a table, load some data, everything, every single SQL statement, DDL, DML, everything is given in the code lab. So we'll copy paste and run and we'll be able to create the spanner database and the table and the data. And then we will create uh, the Java code, the Spring Boot application to deploy the Spanner data as an API interface, uh, sorry, REST uh, API endpoint, right? So that's what we'll do in step four. After we finish step three, which is preparing Spanner data. So how to do that? Everybody, please go to the code lab. Step three, preparing data with Spanner. As you can see right here, um, if you switch back to your Spanner tab, where you have Google Cloud Console uh, Spanner, um, dashboard spanners console where you see create instances button create instance button click that click create instance because we want to create an instance before you could do anything else right um so in your case you should be able to use the sandbox or the one that has like very minimal allocation so instance name go back to the code lab see what is given as the instance name 
make sure that you copy the same thing, okay? Uh, my first spanner instance. All caps, is it? My uh, first letters are cap, uh, cap. My first spanner instance, M, F, S, and I are capitalized. So my first spanner instance. Instance ID is auto-generated. Don't have to change it. Now, region. Remember what region we are choosing here. We have to remember that for other uh, services if we are using for the same application, right? So regional, choose regional, not multi-regional. For this particular use case, we'll use US hyphen central one. Typically, you'll have to dis you'll have to design and discuss what we need to do. You need to know why, where you're deploying an application, what is your business use case, what is your customer, what are the legal implications that you need to go through if you store data in a specific location. All that needs to be addressed. But since it's a demo application, we'll do US hyphen central one. Okay. You can just type US hyphen and it'll come up. Just click that. All right. And processing units. Um, you can set it up to a minimum of 100 because that's the minimum, I think. Yeah, don't set it as, uh, don't set it as node, you can, but processing units is a smaller, uh, smaller quantity. So I'll just say, choose 100 processing units. All right, don't change anything else. Uh, we'll just leave it as it is. You can see what compute capacity tells you and everything about it. But right now, we'll just do this. As you can see, uh, it shows the estimated compute cost, estimated storage cost, and all that. Um, so ultimately, after deploying this application, I would not want you to keep this particular instance. I will want you to delete this instance. I'll tell you how to do that. Um, but this is just for learning purposes. I'm asking you to do it anyway. All right. So we'll delete it so it will not incur you any cost during the session. Um, anything else here that you need to know as of now, nothing. So that's it. Just hit create. Once you click create, it'll take about a few seconds and it will create your instance. In my case, the instance is already there. So I'm not going to create another one, but uh, oh, let me try and do my second spanner instance, but you don't have to change this. You just do it as my first spanner instance. Okay. Show of thumbs on if you are able to create this. Okay. Okay, if it is not letting you create instance, don't worry about it. Um, up until the point we are doing spanner part, you don't have to do it. I'll ultimately give you the URL to the endpoint to my deployed application. So you can all use that. You don't have to actually use the uh, spanner deployment that you're doing. So don't worry about it. If you're unable to do uh, the spanner part, you should be able to because all of you have the same $5 credit. Um, so unless you've accidentally used it or you have skipped, missed that step, you're not paying, you're not paid attention to that step, then probably, yes, you will not be able to um, create instance. But uh, this should not uh, be a, sh a stopper for you if you're creating this, uh, just this instance. But if you're not able to create this instance, just follow me uh, without having to execute these steps until the point we complete the first uh, half of the project. You can start creating from the second, the client application. So until then, you can just watch what I'm doing. Um, anyway, for those who are following me, instance it should say instance is created and it will take you into the instance all right so now the instance is created my first spanner instance now go back to the code lab what it says after that is create database so we need to click create database but uh, as you're doing it also copy the create table ddl from the code lab i'm going to copy this and paste it in the uh, meeting chat so you're able to access it from the chat as well now go back to the code lab it says click data create database and then give the database name as first hyphen spanner hyphen db, all small. And then copy this table, uh, create table DDL. Now go back to your spanner um, console. As you can see right here, you will see databases create database button. Click create database button. It should show this up. And like I said, what is the name of the database you want to give? First spanner, first hyphen spanner hyphen db first hyphen spanner hyphen db all lowercase and leave the database dialect as google standard sql and right where you see ddl templates you know what ddl is right data definition language the the 
uh, style or statement that you use to create tables, columns, and other things uh, is called DDL, right? Uh, everything that allows you to create objects in the database is called a DDL. Now you have pasted that and um, go ahead and hit create. It should take a few seconds and it should say table database is created, table is created or something like that. Database created and it will take you to the database page and it will list the table that is available in the database. In our case, we only created one table now because we sent only one DDL along with the create database command. So let's see what happened. There we go. The database is created in the instance and the table is also created. Now, did we create any data yet? No, we have to create the data within the table to in order to see what is there, right? So let's go back to the code lab, scroll down to 0.5, where it says click Spanner Studio on the database pane on the left and open a new query editor tab. Do that. So on the left, if you just hover over the leftmost corner of the Spanner console, you can see the database um, section. And under database section, right below overview, as a second option, you can see Spanner Studio. Click that. So this should be the place where you write all your queries, edit, and do whatnot. You can see your database objects here in the Explorer pane. On the right, you see the editor. So open editor one, right? So we are going to write some insert statements here. Scroll down. As you can see, the code lab, uh, step 3.6, has all the insert statements that we need to run here. So copy all the entire thing. I'm not going to paste this in the chat because it's a bit lengthy. Um, feel free to, leads if you want, you can just uh, copy three or four at a time so that it's not truncated and paste it in the chat so folks uh, can copy from there. Or you, you please have your code lab open so you can copy paste as needed. Copy uh, the insert statements from point six in step three of the code lab and paste it here in the editor. And once done, in one click, you should be able to insert all the 10 records in the table we just created under the database. Uh, which is first spanner db all right i have successfully inserted 10 queries uh, sorry 10 rows show of thumbs how many of you are able to get this step right perfect let's move on to step four now that the data is available uh, instance database uh, table and data everything is available right now all we have to do is write a simple uh, Java Spring Boot uh, framework application, or basically what I call is a web application to build a REST API for the for exposing the spanner data on the web. So how will I use the spanner data in a client application, right? I cannot, I mean, now nowadays we're just using APIs for everything. We're using only APIs for uh, passing the information downstream and integrating between applications, right? So the same thing, we'll build a REST API. So API, you should all know that anything that uh, compartmentalizes or in, uh, exposes your implementation or your functionality or your data as, um, I mean, of course, authentication is important, but if, if it exposes this access as accessible data or accessible information on the web to other users or downstream applications of your, of your business, that is what we call as API. And REST is the standard protocol for APIs, which is um, which is in use. It, it there were several different protocols in the past, but REST is the one that uh, we use heavily for several purposes, for security and authentication and other reasons. REST is the most um, accepted and standard format that we use for APIs. So here we are going to use we are going to build a REST API with Spring Boot application uh, for exposing the spanner data into our client app. All right. So all this we are doing uh, in order to finally. Uh, integrate that with our client application, uh, wherein we'll call the Imagine API in order to generate the image that we want to see, the poses that we want to see. All right, this is just a database twist to it. So you learn a full 360 degree flavor of software development, like 360 degree flavor of a full stack application, right? So that's why we're doing this. Now, I've already established that we'll build a web application. Now, what is the technology we'll use or framework we'll use? We'll use Spring Boot Framework. And what is the programming language? Obviously, Spring Boot. So we'll say Java is a programming language of choice. And um, Cloud Spanner is a database because we already created the database and the data that we need. And now, finally, what we're going to do is 
Um, I've already built the application and uh, checked in the code, and the code is available in my GitHub repository, which is available here. All we have to do is just execute this command to pull the code and store it in your Cloud Shell machine. And from that point, we'll just see a two minute overview of what the application does and we'll deploy the application. So how are we going to deploy the application? We've already established the fact that this is a REST API, right? So we want to make sure that this application is available as an API deployed on the cloud, Google Cloud, right? And we want to do this serverlessly. So we will use CloudRun as a choice. So we'll deploy this in CloudRun in just one command. OK, so what we'll do right here is um, git clone step. So everybody, please make sure that you're on the code lab, uh, code lab's fourth step, which is build a REST API with Spring Boot and Spanner for post data. Uh, Spanner for post data. OK, so first point here is to uh, clone the repository that I've uh, provided here, which contains the server code for this particular application. So I'm going to copy this command. I'll paste this command here in the link as well. Now go to your Cloud Shell tab where you have the black screen open. Paste this command, right? And run. Hit enter. Now it should create a project folder called spanner-springb in this uh, editor so you i'm hoping you all have the cloud shell editor already open if not just right click on the google cloud tab open another tab and then quickly click the same activate cloud shell um, button on the top right corner and as soon as it can open open term open the terminal quickly click the open editor button so it takes you to the editor so otherwise you can just toggle between the same screen here uh, sorry toggle between the uh, two things, the open terminal and open editor in the same tab, but I prefer not to do that. If you want, you can do that. All right, so I have the editor open in another tab. As you can see right here, let's see if this project is cloned. Yes. Can you see here, spanner-springb, it's been cloned inside this particular project, and I see everything that I need over here. So what we have here, this is the project structure um, for the Spring Boot framework. Um, as you can see, under the source code, you have uh, the demo application .java. This is what kickstarts the uh, um, this, this kickstarts this entire uh, application, and then we have the yoga controller class. So this is the controller class which interfaces between the front end. I'm sorry, there's no front end here. This is a REST API. This is what interfaces between the POJO, the plain old Java classes, which has the interfacing to the databases, right? The ORM. So this is the controller that that tells what command or what verb in the or instead of verb you can say method what method rest api method um, invokes what functionality so this is the class that defines that say for example if i deploy this in a url and just hit just put slash and then hit enter which is right where your deployed url is just hit enter it should just return all the records in the table uh, that I've configured in this particular application. That's all it does. It doesn't, if you see, it doesn't have any other mapping. It just has one get method. There is no post. We are not going to update anything. You can build it as an upgrade to this project. You can build post. You can build patch. You can build delete. You can build put whatever you want. You can build on top of this. You can build any REST API method that you want, but we are only going to do a simple get method in this particular REST API. And that's why this controller class has, has only this method mainly. All right, and then you go to the repository. There's an interface that implements the, um, um, the it doesn't implement anything. It just extends the spanner repository, which is mandatory. So um, don't change anything here. We need this. And uh, when you're cloning it, you can, I'll tell you why we need this. You can see the pom.xml generated here. So this is the file, the XML file that holds all the dependencies. So if you see, there is a spanner, um, dependency that has that sh that should have been added here just search for it as you can see it's right here it's spring cloud gcp starter data spanner so this dependency is what allows this communication and the yoga repository extends spanner repository so this is the class that has the implementation that is required for this particular application to interface with the spanner database that we have and the data that we have right there right so that is why this is important you don't have to change anything here um, and then finally, there is one thing which is application.properties. This is where you need to make changes. So click application properties. If you are not seeing this, in your case, you should be seeing this because I just cloned it, uh, direct, uh, you just cloned it from the repository. So you should see values against all these three, the instance ID, database ID, 
and uh, allow being definition overriding is true. Make sure that typically you can pass these as environment variables. You can store these in secrets. That's the best practice. This is just a demo application. So we have it in the application properties file itself, but this is not advisable. Keep it in uh, secret uh, credentials. You have to store it in secret or you have to store it in environment variables, whichever is convenient depending on how you're deploying it. All right. So now we have everything ready. Go back to the code lab to see what we have to do next. Now we have seen that the application code is ready, right? You're not, you don't have to change anything there. Everything is ready. All we have to do is go into that project folder from your Cloud Shell terminal, compile, create the compiled package, and then run it locally, and then deploy it in Cloud Run. That's it. That's the amount of steps you have. And then the app will be deployed, and then we can go on to the client application. All right, now let's do this step, which is navigating into the new project, which project directory, which we just created. Copy the CD command, go to Cloud Shell Terminal, write CD space spanner hyphen spring B and hit enter. Right, you should be inside that particular folder. Go to the code lab, copy the next step, which is dot slash MVNW package. So Maven is our preferred, um, build tool of choice there's other tools like gradle um and builder there's so many different types of builder tool build tools you can use we are using maven and how do we know we are using maven if you're building it from the scratch there are ways to uh, choose or change uh, the build tools that you want that is for another day i have a series called spring boot on google cloud or java and spring boot on google cloud that's published in the medium um uh, medium uh, gcp's channel so i'll give the link to that later on go there and learn that those basics and how to change that for now because we have cloned it just know if you go here to pom.xml file one more time you can see that um you can see the dependency if you search for it you should you should be able to see maven plugin so we've used maven here if you're using gradle it should be a you won't use pom.xml there will be a different way of uh, building it all right um, so now that we have uh, completed the, we have navigated to the directory, we want to package, compile and package. So let's do, uh, paste the command that we just copied. Packaging. No such file or directory. How so? Why is that error? Just there. Is there anything in the chat? Um, yeah, uh, I think you can directly call uh, MVN and uh, package that will download all the packets. Um, but I had it all in the repository. It should be able to run MVNW as well. You have that file, but uh, for some reason it's not able. Okay, if if that is not working, it's there for some reason. It's not probably check. Uh, in the repository, you can just use MVN space package if dot slash MVNW is not working. Can you just ping that in the chat so if people can copy? Abhi, um, MVN package was fail is failing with unit test failure. So I just skipped the test because there's a test failure, which was, yeah. Cool. I think the test classes were deleted in the repository. Let's see what happens. Uh, one test class is there for the main application file, demo application test. Can you also paste that command for skip test so people can, those who are running the application can copy that, the hyphen hyphen. Yeah. 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 Well, it's taking a lot of time. Yeah, it has a lot of uh, dependencies, so you have to download all those packages. It took me close to two minutes to download all the packages. All right, all right. So we have time, so let's finish this. Okay, so test is successful. I mean, the build is successful. So I'm able to see this. For those who have test failures, you can also 
um, copy the command that uh, I don't see the command now. Vandana has pasted there, MVN clean install. So just use that. Uh, but you should be able to get it successfully done using the same um, cloned code from the repository. All right, now that this is done, what's the next step is you can either run it locally or you can directly push to Cloud Run. So I'm going to push to Cloud Run directly because I just want, in the interest of time, let's just skip the testing locally step, which is the Spring, Spring Boot Run. We'll just go to this part, which is gcloud run deploy hyphen, is that a double hyphen? I think it's a double hyphen, hyphen, hyphen source space dot. So I'll just paste it here. Make sure that it is a double hyphen. And then space dot. Dot is important. So don't miss that because that's what it that's what tells that the source code is in this particular folder. Right. So gcloud and deploy. So what we are saying is gcloud is a command, uh, the command for template. And uh, run is because we are using uh, cloud run as a service to deploy serverlessly. Deploy is a command you're passing. And uh, source hyphen hyphen source tells um, the G Cloud command that the source directory is in this particular folder, which is dot. All right. So let's see what happens here. Recognized arguments. G Cloud. Run. It's not uh, double hyphen. I guess that's why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It is not copying the double hyphen. So make sure you type double hyphen. Yeah. When you're copying, it somehow clubs the two and makes one hyphen. So make sure you put double hyphen there. Now, service name, let's use the same service name that is recommended in the, if there is no, no recommendation, let's just call it uh, spanner hyphen data. That's it, okay? Pass that as a service name. You can type anything you want. This is the name that it will use for the cloud run service. So I'm going to call it spanner hyphen data. Next, it will ask the region of choice. Remember the same region that we used for the data, try and use the same thing, which is US hyphen central one. As you can see, the number against that is 31. So I'm going to use 31 as the input for this. Allow unauthenticated invocations. Typically, no, for your, for your productionizable applications, you should not another, allow unauthenticated invocation. But this is a demo, so we're going to say why. Um, so that way, everyone can access. And you don't have to use your own, um, your own API. I'll ask you to. Um, I'll ask you to either deactivate the instance or delete that instance eventually and uh, de deactivate the service also. So I'm going to just do Y, which is allowing unauthenticated invocation. So let's do Y. Now it's building. It will take a few seconds uh, to come or a couple of minutes to complete build. And you'll get an endpoint, which will expose the data in the spanner database, which we just created. All right, once this is created, we'll just jump right into the second part of this demo, which is creating the client application. This is very similar. We'll just clone the project entire completely from the repository, no change. Um, build and deploy. I'll just explain what the code does quickly. And I'll show you where we are invoking the Imagine API. And then we'll see a quick demo, right? How many of you are able to get to this step? Yeah, Abhijit, that's because your source parameter is wrong. Hyphen, hyphen, you have used different styles of hyphen. Yeah, uh, Jaya, the, the copy paste is not working with the hyphen, hyphen source for some reason. So make sure you type it. So Atav, I see a down a thumbs down. Was there an issue deploying your app um Abhiram, if you don't mind uh, uh, others who are facing issues you can directly run uh, g cloud run deploy and uh, it will be interactive where it will where it will ask you for the location and you can enter the dot there that way you know that is also another yes. option yeah, yeah. In case you have some uh, uh, typos in your command it should still work fine after the double dot, there should be a sorry, double hyphen, there should be a dot. Service name can be anything, Pratik. I gave spanner hyphen data. Region should be 31 because we created US hyphen central one, right? We created the data in US central one. How many of you got the build deployed? 
and uh, got the app deployed and got the URL. Anybody? A lot of you got the URL. Okay. It's taking some time. It will take a few minutes. Yeah. But for those who have not able to get the URL deployed properly, um, what could be the issue? Um, if it's working for most of you, all of us probably just did the copy paste. And yes, there are a few dependencies in this. And I have dot MVNW. Um, if it's not working, just use the MVN command directly. It's the same thing. It's just MVN. Um, and the skip tests, even without skipping tests, it should be successfully compiling. It should be successfully building because some of us were able to get it successfully built. That should not be an issue. All right, so build is done and I've received my service URL. So this is the service URL that we're going to use. So I'll just copy the service URL. I'll just click that and it will open in a new tab. And we should be seeing the data that we just entered in Spanner. So how many of you are able to get this step? Show of thumbs, please. OK, perfect. For those who are not able to get this step to work, Please don't worry, you can do it at your own pace. This is not part of the result screenshot you need to provide. I'll give you my URL in the tab. Please use that particular copy that and put it in a notepad or save it somewhere. We'll use this in the client application. Okay. Still building. Okay, I'll give you two, uh, two more minutes. We'll start at 9 4. Uh, we'll start the second part of the application at 9 4. I don't understand what the crab icon means trying to say this is good this is easy this is difficult use thumbs up i mean i don't know what crab means if you can tell me in the chat please oh some of you might not get it to work if you're not if you skip the step um, of navigating into the directory where your project is the spanner hyphen spring me yeah if you were not inside spanner hyphen spring b if you miss any of the steps that we discussed then you will not be able to um, compile or build properly you will see issues service name may have can be anything in our case we did spring hyphen data i'm sorry not spring spanner hyphen data yes after giving 31 it will ask you whether you want to do unauthenticated invocation i think for that you should do y All right, um, so those who are still deploying, are you done? Show of thumbs, please. Okay, yeah, nine five will start for sure. We have to quickly wrap it up as well. So just deploy it quickly. Yeah, Kiran has summarized the steps. If any of those steps is missed, then you would not be able to build or deploy successfully. Yes, allow unauthenticated should be why. That's okay. See, if you're not able to, no permission to delete yoga controller, you're not supposed to delete anything somewhat. So something you must have missed in between. So please feel free to go through the code lab at your own pace. Here is the link that you want, I want you to copy and paste somewhere or copy, just paste it in your notepad somewhere. We will use this link in the uh, client application. You will all use this. Don't use your own deployed apps because I don't want to uh, want this. When you're submitting results, I don't want your Spanner instance to be up and running at the time of submission of results. So that's why. Um, here is the... Summarize from step five, is it? Is it, somebody asked for summarizing from step five, right? Uh, point five, I believe, in step four. What is what is the question? Sorry, I didn't get. I don't know. There is no step five in. There is no point five in step step four. So I hope you are all successfully able to deploy. Some of you were not. Some of you had issues, but that's fine. Uh, 
step four is what you need to do uh, at your own pace. You can try and uh, deploy this app uh, using the steps that are available in step four in this particular code lab. Let's move on to the next one, which is bootstrapping a gen post generator app. Now, this is the main part. This is where we are calling the Imagine API, which is where we are involving generative AI at all. So what we did with Spanner is not at all in scope. Um, it is, it is, it's not very uh, influ influential in this particular use case because we are actually, we can just override it by just providing any prompt that you want in the text and then click generate API. We just did the whole thing so that you're aware of how to, like in your real world use cases, your data will be coming from some database, say Spanner, or it could be coming in from BigQuery, or it could be coming in from MongoDB on Google Cloud or anything for that matter, right? Um, so you need to know how, how to put the pieces together and get your applications up and running. And you'll also need some familiarity with all the other services with Google Cloud. That's why we did that. All right, now moving on to the next step. Use this data and plug this data in into a client application or user interface. And then from that user interface, invoke Imagine API, uh, Imagine API and get the result and get it display, display, displayed in the user interface that we are building. That's what we are going to do. In so what we'll do here is the code is already ready. Like I said, it's in this repository. We'll start with the same step, which is git clone and the repository link. So copy this. I'm pasting this link, uh, this command here as well. Sorry, it didn't copy the whole thing. Did it? Yeah, it copied the whole thing. Git clone and followed by the repository link. Now go back to your cloud shell control, uh, cloud shell terminal. Uh, you can close this tab, which shows the spanner data. Go back to your Cloud Shell terminal. Now, come out of that project that you were in before, Spanner Spring B. Just do CD. It'll take you out of that particular, and then you can clear it if you want. So now make sure you're not inside any directory. You should just be seeing your project ID. That's it, nothing else. Now paste this Git clone because we're creating a new project, right? So do this Git clone and then this project. In my case, it's already there, so I'm not going to press Enter. So if it's not there in your case, just do git clone and followed by the uh, repository link. Press enter. It will create this particular project in your uh, uh, editor. I'm going to just rename it so I can show you what it looks like. Username. What's wrong? Oh, sorry. My bad. All right, so I have cloned it. So I'll go to the editor and I show you where I've cloned it. So this is what the structure looks like. You should be able to see gen AI uh, hyphen post gen. And under that project, you should see the entire structure, which is uh, very similar to what we discussed with the previous project. The only difference here is uh, we are not exposing anything, any data into it as an API. We are not building a web API. Rather, we are building a client web application, which consumes that API we built, right? Um, so if you see the prompt controller, it will, the functionality, it will still have some uh, REST API methods, the verbs that we use with the API, but um, it is not necessarily implementation of the API itself. Rather, it will use these to interact with the user interface, the, the HTML pages that we are going to create. All right, so you should see um, the, S, uh, the main folder, which contains all these source files. Like you can see, it should show the demo application, it should show prompt.java, it should show prompt controller, and then it should show yoga or Java, Java. Prompt and yoga are all pojos, um, which are kind of like the, um, the classes that interact with the underlying data itself. So you will have, uh, if you go to yoga or Java, it is very similar to what we had in the, uh, what we created in the Spanner database, right? So we had the post name, we had the post description, uh, we had the breadth that is related to the post and the ID. And if you go to prompt, this is a new ORM that or new new um, Pojo we are creating. We have created with only two variables, which is prompt and response. We are asking a question and getting a response. We are just having this here. And as you can see, the prompt controller has a few methods here. These methods, if you see, these interact with the HTML pages, which is the front end, to pass information because we are using a component called time leaf in this. So time leaf is a dependency, which is um, uh, which, which is a which is a template 
builder that we are using for the front end, which is user interface. Again, I'm not going to get into the details of what it is and how to um, how to get started with Timeleaf and all that. You the code is there. You can just if you want to just get started with this, you can use this app. If you want to understand the underlying components, just go to the uh, Java and Spring Boot on Google Cloud series, which is there. Um, I'll share the link to that uh, thing where I've written what each component means and what time leaf means, how to use that in your application, get started samples and all that. So this has, um, as you can see, there is a JavaScript folder that just has very basic methods, just validation and calling the other method and so on. Uh, images just has some images that will make the look, look and feel of the user interface itself. And CSS has the styling uh, sheet controls over there, the commands over there. And then the HTML page itself, there's only two pages, which is index and get image. The index is the landing page. Um, and the get image is the response page where you see the response. Get image is where you send the prompt. Get uh, Sorry, index is where you send the prompt request. And get image is the HTML where you see the response. That's about it. So that is under the folder. Uh, where is it? If you expand SRC, you should be able to see under main, under resources. You should see static and templates. So under static, you should see uh, the CSS images and J JavaScript folders. And under templates, you should see the two HTML files, which is index and get image. That's it. Um, how they interact and all those things are uh, are described very de in very much uh, for detail in this particular step in the code lab, which is step five. Just take a look at what prompt controller does here. Uh, this class interacts with the time leaf templates that take care of data integration to user interface. That is a simple definition to the templates that we've used. And the service methods in this class, there are three service methods. One is getting the prompt input from the user. For example, you're saying generate a puppy or a cat doing a yoga pose. That is a prompt. Now, for processing the request and invoking the image in Imagine API, you have another method. And the third method we have is processing the response. As I said, the response is coming in as a base 64 encoded string. We have to convert that into an image and display in the UI, right? So that is the third method. The second method is processing your input string and calling the Imagine API from Vertex AI. And the first method is accepting your user input and sending it to the second method. That's it. These are the three services that we are doing under the prompt controller. So if you go to prompt controller source code, you can see these three things. Go to prompt controller under Java, com example demo, prompt controller, you will see these three methods in the in the class definition. All right. Now going back, um, prompt and yoga are the Pojo classes that contain the fields, getters, and setters to interface with the Imagine API and the Spanner data. So like I said, there are two Pojo classes here. Uh, one is prompt and one is yoga. Yoga is a class that interacts with the Spanner data. And prompt is a class that interacts with the Imagine API because it has two variables only. I told that already, which is prompt and response. Uh, prompt is your request. So you can just assume this is request and response instead of prompt and response. Um, prompt is, in simple words, nothing but what you want the system to do, the machine, the generative AI machine to do. That's what a prompt is. The next one is index and get image HTML files. I already said what they are used for. And Vertex AI Imagine integration. So this is the image generation use case uh, API that we are calling from Vertex AI in the following format. So this is the format of the API. Nothing, we are doing nothing except for just invoking, invoking the specific API, which you should all have access to. Now, there will be a specific part which you have to do, which is the authentication part uh, for this particular API. Uh, so for that, you need to, so if you all have like five more minutes, let's finish this and then we'll deploy this, okay? Uh, so how we are able to do this is, th if you see in the same step in the code lab under authorization topic, it asks you to uh, to generate a bearer token. So this is a bearer token authentication method that we have followed. So in order to do that, all you have to do is just run this particular command, gcloud auth application hyphen default login from your Cloud Shell terminal. Go to your Cloud Shell terminal, run this particular command, gcloud auth application hyphen default login, press enter. I'm not pressing enter because I already have this. So uh, once you press enter, you should be able to uh, answer a few questions. It will say authenticate with your account. You have to say capital Y. You have to do shift Y. And then it will say allow access and copy the authorization code that is shown in the pop-up. You have to do that. Okay. And once you do that, you will get default application credentials stored in a specific JSON file, which is very similar to the specific location. 
Now you can download the file contents by just doing a cat command and opening the credentials and you can save it and use it in the code as it is, or you can store it in a file or you can use a, use a secret method. We'll just use the storing it in a string in the code file for now for this demo purposes. So I'll show you how it works. So just copy paste the gcloud auth application default login, hit enter. And what's, once you hit, hit enter, it'll ask, do you want to continue? Say capital Y and hit enter. It'll ask, it will give you a link. Click that link in the browser. It will ask you to choose that particular account. And I'm choosing my account. And it will ask you to allow. Click allow. And once you click allow, copy the authorization code that has been generated. Close this and enter the authorization code in the uh, prompt and hit enter. Credentials saved to a specific file. So I have my credentials stored in this file now. So how do I know what is stored there? Just do a cat and paste that file path, copy that file path from this particular location, paste it here, enter, and you have received your authentication credentials. Now I'm going to copy this. So this will only work for your project, okay, because you're authenticating it. So no, no use copying somebody else's authentication. So you have to do this. Copy this because you're doing a service account kind of authentication, right? You're giving your project the permission to run for anyone accessing your API or your application. So you've copied this. Now what we'll do is just um, come back here to your source code, go to the editor tab. And as you can see, go to prompt controller and in the prompt controller, scroll up. There is a part where it asks you to, I'll tell you which line number it is. Huh, here, call imagine. So it is asked, it, there is a variable called string str your apps application default credentials dot JSON. Instead of file, for, for, for now, I'm just pasting the string right here uh, and put a semicolon. Just make sure it's all in one line. Uh, you can edit it in you can edit it in whatever format you want. Just edit it quickly so there is no compile time error. Just make sure the entire string is in one line. All right, so once you do this, you also make uh, have to make another correction here because it's all in double quotes. So make sure you add a backslash before every uh, double quote you have. Before or after, I think it's before, right? Uh, not a... Is it a forward slash or it's a forward slash, right? So you need to add a forward slash right before the quote. So go back here to your prompt controller, just add a slash before all the, in front of, right in front of all your uh, double quotes, just to make sure there is no issue running the code. So there is no way we can paste this because each credential is specific to a person. So you can generate this credential. There are other ways to do this too. So you can explore that. The links to other ways, um, the link to other ways of implementing this is provided in the code lab. So please refer, refer that. For now, we'll just do this method. So put a forward slash, put a slash here, a slash here, here, and here. All right, so there is no compilation error in my code right now. I'll just save it. Just make sure this is there. This is important. So once that is particular, uh, that, that that is done, the authentication step is done. We should be good. There is no other particular thing that you need to change except for one other thing in line number one four zero or the line number where the param string, the API of your um, Imagine API needs to be uh, validated because here I have given a placeholder for your project. This also has to be your project ID. So there's only a placeholder. It will not work for everyone in common, right? So whichever one is your service account or your production um, platform that is or environment when you're actually doing it, you have to parameterize these things. This won't live in the source code, right? We are just doing a demo and I want to explain how things work. So we are doing it this way. Um, provide your project ID, your ID, not just the name. So I'll copy that from here, drop down. And I'll copy my ID from here and replace it in this one. And we should be good. Everything else is the same, nothing changes. And there is one more thing. If you remember, we need the API of the database, right? So where is that? We need to replace that right here. 
So I think that is already populated. You can just use that. You don't have to change that particular get post list. So technically, you will be using the API that I gave you in the chat or the API that is already there in the code, which is the same thing, which is the deployed spanner data API. You don't have to change it. Uh, you can just leave it as such. So you have cloned the code and you have made only two changes. Everything else is same. We have just gone through what each part of the code does. We didn't go through the HTMLs. I'll show that in a little bit. But as long as you're able to uh, just clone the code, you're good. Only two changes. One is the application default credentials for authentication of the Imagine API. And two, the uh, Imagine API's project ID itself needs to be changed. Only those two changes and save it. You should be good. Now, one last thing is to see what the HTML files look like. Go to index.html. As you can see, the action here, when you click generate, you're calling the method get image. So this will look for this particular verb or this particular method called get image in the prompt controller because that is how time leaf and the Spring Boot framework works, right? It, it, uh, that's how that framework works, that it will pass the control to the controller and it will say, okay, I'm calling this particular method, see where I'm annotated. So these are called annotations. So it will look for the get image annotation here in the get method and it'll say okay i found you now it will call this particular method so in this method what it does is it does a bunch of things like forming the prompt itself and it's just printing it in the log um, just to see if you have any issues you can go back and check in the log i'll show you how to check logs and then finally you're calling the next method which is imagine call imagine and call imagine is also in the same class scroll down you can see call imagine method and this one uh, with the authentication credential and the param string, the, the API URL for the Imagine API, it calls the Imagine API and it returns the result as a base64 string. Now, this string, uh, with this string, what we are doing here is we are passing that string as an attribute to the model in view, which is we are returning this as a model in view object back to the, uh, to the HTML page. So it comes back to get image HTML. And in here, as you can see, it will take that particular um, string that we, that you have sent back to it and pass it to the load image method on load. So where can you find it? You can find it in the JavaScript folder, get image.js. You can see the load image method here, which takes the base64 string and sets the image attribute to the image um, converted image. Uh, converts from base64 to an image and prints it on the get image.html screen. So that's about it. So let's deploy and see your application working. Just two more minutes and we should be good. So in order to do that, you again have to navigate into the directory which we just cloned, right? Which is genai-postgen. So let's do it. cd genai-postgen. Enter. Again, let's see if it works at least this time. I don't know what was wrong with the, oh, sorry, wrong command. You should do, okay, go back to the code lab for you to know what to do. Go to the sixth step, build and deploy. Navigate into uh, the folder by going to cd genai-postgen. And then second step, in this one, mvnw package. See if it works. If not, you can just do mvn clean install. It works, dot mvnw package. There you go. Um, the application is building. And once it's complete, you should see that the build is successful. Yes, in this case, it's quick. Um, the next step is running locally, which we don't want to do. I'll directly deploy it in Cloud Run and see it working. OK, so I'll copy G Cloud Run Deploy. Hi, don't copy, just type it here. G Cloud Run Deploy space hyphen hyphen source space dot. I'll ask for the service name. I'm just going to say postgen and hit enter. Same thing, it will ask for the region. I'm going to choose the same region, 31, which is US hyphen central one. And then it will start building. So I'll just pause here to ask if anyone has gone to this step. Show of thumbs, please. A lot of thumbs down, a few thumbs up. That's fine. You have you will get the recording. You will have the code lab. You can follow this through. Um, if you can ping in the chat as to which step most of you are uh, having issues with. Oh, this is the slash that you need to use. After authorization. 
the forward is that the forward slash i always get confused between which one is forward and which one is backward the one that is like this oh where to add um i'll show you while it is loading i'll go back to the source code and show you go to go to cloud shell editor um and go to prompt controller go to the method that has um image call imagine call imagine so this is the string that you generated right this is the um, authentic potential that you can you please mute whoever is unmuted please uh dharun can you please mute yourself okay so as you can see right here uh, if you go to this particular call imagine method so i showed you how to retrieve the adc which is application default credential from google cloud right by writing that gcloud um, authentication command right so once you get that particular credential um what you have to do is you paste it like this it, it it is these slashes are not generated it just gives you a json string but you can't just pass a json string with double quotes as a string in java class right so you need to uh, use these um, you need to use this backslash to make sure the string does not give you a compilation error because the string is used to enclose any string variable any string value as well so it will get confused if you want to use a string as a str a double quote as a string then you need to append that or prefix that with a, with a slash um, forward slash if it is or back whatever it is you need to append it with a slash so basically this is same as doing let's say string str1 equal to abhirame right now instead of this i want to say uh, double quotes abhirame how will i do that it will assume this double quote is also in closing a string right it will not realize this double quote is part of the string so in order to make java recognize that you have to append uh, prefix it with a slash that's all same thing with the second double quotes you need to prefix it with a slash now there is no error so that's what we are doing right here for all the double quotes in your json string you need to replay you need to prefix this with a slash whatever slash that is it looks like this Spanner link, you don't have to change. I already have it and have my spanner link in the code. So I did not remove it. So it is right here in under prompt controller uh, class. It's a class variable, the st private static final string get post list. This already has my spanner API link. I did not remove it because I didn't want you to actually deploy that app, but we ended up deploying it anyway. So the next step after string thing, I'll just quickly explain. Uh, we created this. We, there's only two things that you need to change after cloning the client app, right? One is the ADC, which is the application default credential. The second thing is the project ID. So uh, if you see under call imagine method where you're actually calling the imagine API, the parameter, the API itself has project ID placeholder. So replace that with your project ID. In this case, my project ID is this. So I've replaced it. In your case, you have to replace that with your project ID. In case you have chosen a different region, you have to pass in that region as well. OK. So once you're done with this, um, there's no other change. Just save it and go to the Cloud Shell terminal. Make sure you're navigating to the project directory that you just cloned, which is genai-postgen, by using cd space genai-postgen once you're inside that. Uh, use the maven command dot slash mvnw uh, package to compile and package it and then deploy it in cloud run the commands are available here itself in the step six now let's see if my deployment is complete yes it's complete and i've received the service url i'm going to click this to see if our app is loading fine Yeah, there we go. The app is loading fine. Um, so you can select a post, but it's not required also. This is just to see how you interact with your database data. So let's say I just want to do uh, uh, blank. Let's say generate an image 
need image for a puppy doing a plank pose and click generate image what happened there's no image puppy doing plank no why what went wrong Is there anything we need to change in the, let's see quickly what happened. Okay, I'll also show you how to see the errors, if any. So go to right click and open Google Cloud um, console again. Okay, and in the search tab, do uh, logging. Once you do that, just open Logs Explorer or just any application logging that you want for monitoring. It opens a dashboard, and you should be able to see um, if we have any error there. Is there a question? Yeah, the credential step and everything that you want is there in the code lab. Please follow that. Looks like we have an exception. Is it that you want database not found? Maybe I accidentally deleted it. Let's see if that uh, database is actually working first before we use that particular old one. I use the old one, so that could be a reason. So let me see. If that is not working, we'll use the new app. Oh, it is working. Why is there an error? The Logs Explorer should be able to show you if you have any error in the app. Oh, uh, was there anything else we needed to change? Um, uh, in your application properties, did you change the um, database instance name to the latest one? But this is a client app. We're using API, right? We don't need to do any application properties the error is it is saying that the database is not found which is which means the service is throwing that error correct correct but the service is working we just saw that right i'm trying to see if okay. there is any see if you see app properties it's empty in this one because it's a client app we don't need to connect to database directly because we are using the api for that okay. so let's see what the well, let me see what the error is one more time mm. Not found where what database it is looking for. Click new test three. Why? I'm not using that. Hold on. Is like... Oh, there is another possibility because I changed the authentication. That could be a reason. Um also, because I changed the authentication now to show you guys this demo, um, but it's still accessing the old authentication, perhaps because I'm using the old project. So that could be a reason. So let me try, try if that is a reason. Prompt controller. This is what I did right here. I'll copy this and I'll paste it here. No, this is where I pasted, I think, the new one. Yeah, this is different. The fresh token is different. Probably that's what it is. Okay, so I'll change that and see how it goes. Go to prompt controller here. All right, so this is hopefully the newest one. If not, let me just quickly see if this was the new one. Okay, clear the screen. Here we 
Okay, here. Yeah. All right. So let's run this and see if there is any difference. Okay, because it's these two are the refresh token for these two uh, is different. So that's probably why it was failing, hopefully. Right, and then we have gcloud run deploy hyphen hyphen source dot because we want to deploy it to cloud run, or we can just check it locally too. Let's check it locally first. It's taking a few minutes to run, right? MENW string hyphen root run. So this is just to run this application without deploying it serverlessly on the cloud, right? So we're just trying to see if the app runs locally. So I'll click here to see the preview, web preview, preview on port 8080. I'll just do copy doing uh, rank posts. Click generate image. Still no. What could be the issue? Let's see if it's refreshed. Jump to now. It's 37 right here. It is still the spanner exception. I have no clue why, because we are using an API. And the API returns values, hopefully. And it's checking demo instance databases test one. Where are you looking? All right. One last time, let's just check a database. If not, I'll have to look into this. Uh, this is the app, prompt controller, and we are here in get post list. So this is the application that I'm running. I'm going to just check. This is returning data. Yes, it is. And that's about it. There is nowhere else we are using spanner here, are we? No, it's just this API. And where are we using get post list? There. That's it. So we are just passing this as an API. There is no uh, spanner call here at all apart from this API. Let's just quickly check if there is anything in the yoga classes by accident do we have any spanner annotation here no nothing let's go to palm xml just make sure there's nothing here nothing there's no dependency also invoked so then why is it failing Am I in the wrong project or something? Jenny hyphen post gen, not in the wrong project. Anyone got it to work? Anyone gets the application to work in the call? Suheel, you got the result? Yes, I did. Uh, can you sh share your screen and show the result? Sure, I can. Cool. Any a, anything different that you did apart from just uh, um, cloning for, this? And... For the rest of us, I guess we got the uh, 
permission denied uh, error uh, when okay. we tried to destroy. So we had I had to give permission to a couple of files. I'll uh, walk you. Walk you through. But you can just see, see if the deployment is a problem, you can run it locally and show. Sure. So, but this is how the uh, the uh, thing works. So, if you want a uh, cat doing. Uh, Chairs. All right. There you go. Cat sitting on a chair. Okay. So, no, just, okay, mine is also working now. Okay. So, let me share my screen. The problem was not with the database. The problem was that if there is, okay, sorry, this is an important thing that we all need to know. Um, if there is an issue, um, thank, thanks, Suheel. So mine is also working. The problem is the word puppy. Um, if if it has any issue with the image that is generated, or if it doesn't find it um, relatable, or it is relevant, or it is not safe, or not, um, and if there is something indecent or not safe about the data, that's how um, it is provisioned to work. So it is not. It will not deliver the image. It will say. Uh, the safety filter is set to a certain level, and the sa sa by safety filter, it will return for uh, return blocked equal to true. So if it is blocked, it won't show the image. So that's why we did not we were not able to see. So I changed it to cat now. Um, let's let's try something else. Uh, let's do. I didn't do anything. The same deployed application. Let's try astronaut trying uh, astronaut doing uh, but sea lunch or something like that. And click generate image. So that's what it was. Okay, I thought there was something with the database, which is should not be the issue at all. Okay, something. It's uh, an astronaut trying to do a curtsy lunge, or an astronaut doing a plank. Click generate image. There you go. Uh, trying to do a plank, I guess. So that's what it is. Now, there are two uh, methods right here, which are kept open. If anyone wants to contribute to the repository, wants to build an open source method for this particular uh, project, what I want you to do is, if you're not happy with the image, let's say you are saying that I want to upload a different image and say, this is what a plank looks like. I want a response to look like this. So we are actually fine tuning the model. We are not going to fine tune it, just upload it somewhere. And fine tuning can be another extended project. But here you can just upload the image and store it in Google Cloud Storage. That could be one functionality. The other one is save post image to database, which is if I like this image, I just click this button and say, um, I want to save this. This post looks fine. I want to save this to a Google Cloud Storage. So these two functions, functionalities are open for your implementation. It's open source. Of course, you can just um, clone it. You can uh, you can actually submit a pull request if you're if you manage to complete this. But just let me know. I will I will not be able to accept multiple. But yeah, different formats of execution. We'll choose one and make that as the final version if you do something advanced with this particular project. Okay. Um, again, if you go back to just deploying it on Google Cloud, you will be able to see the same application running successfully. It was not running before, not because the app is not working. It's because the um, the prompt returned an image that was not uh, that was actually blocked by the response by the safety filter we have. So that's why that's an important thing to know. So good that I got to uh, explain that as well. Um, let's just try it out with the same. This is Cloud Run. This app is deployed in Cloud Run now. We can just say astronaut doing plank. You don't have to write generate an image. It's already um, coded for that, but we'll just do it. Fine. It should work fine, just fine and not be blocked, hopefully, yeah. So we are good here. Um, this is what I want you to send in as a response. If you manage to complete this, just send this result as a screenshot. You don't have to do the first half of the project, which is doing the spanner part, because it's already completed. Um, I mean, th that was just an extension and for your awareness. But if you are interested in contributing to the two methods which are open for you to do, you need that spanner thing done. Uh, but make sure that you're aware that the instance is up and running and you will have to deactivate it as and when your demo is complete. If you feel that um, you want to use your own spanner data and not use my my um, endpoint that is there in the code, then feel free to take a screenshot, upload it in a um, in a Google Drive and give access to everyone. 
uh, anyone with the link so that only I'll have access to see it. I'll just um, sorry, only I'll have access to the to the sheets where you're uploading the result, right? Um, in the form. So I'll be able to validate that your result is accurate. You don't have to keep your app running. So what I want you to do is, this is important step because you've deployed everything. Go to Spanner and make sure you either, after taking the screenshots of the final result, make sure you delete the Spanner instance. You can go to instances, you can uh, select the instance that you want to delete and click delete. It's fairly straightforward. Um, so right here go to your instance and delete instance there's a delete in, there was a delete instance button on top and for cloud run what i want you to do is go to cloud run select the service that you just deployed and click delete it will not charge you anything it will not cost you anything if you leave the cloud run on but if you happen to share it publicly to somebody else or leave it somewhere publicly if people or any bot starts hitting your cloud run url you'll be in trouble so make sure that is not the case. Delete the uh, as soon as you take the screenshot, you can just delete it and upload it in um, a specific uh, drive drive folder and uh, grant permission and upload your result. Or if you feel like I'm not using instance, I, I'm okay with this. Just share the link. Um, I'll just validate it, and then after probably end of the month or end of uh, December, you can delete the instance. So that's about it. I hope some of you were able to complete, and I hope the rest of you were able to understand what it is and take some time to do it at your own pace. I'm sorry for the delay. I really thought the issue was with the database, but there was no issue with that because there was no database call involved directly. We just used the API for this purpose. The only thing was uh, make sure what your prompt is and make sure the response, if the, if the image is not good enough, or it's filtered, it will be blocked and you won't see the image. You can handle it. I have clearly not handled it. So sorry for that. Um, show of thumbs, how many of you were able to relate to this or complete this so far? OK. All right. How many of you are going to complete it in the next few weeks? Try to implement this. Everything that we discussed here is there in the code lab. There's nothing that's missing in the code lab that I talked about today try it out at your own time please feel free to uh, chime into the discord server and ask questions mm, i'll answer the leads will answer yeah you can close the spanner instance no worries yeah that's fine all right i'll stop the recording here uh, i'll just stay around for two three minutes for any question or anything else because we spend way too much time um, i just want to make sure that Abhi, no, my your questions are resolved. It's failing. It's showing that MVN de permission denied error. The I'm not able to deploy the application. I tried multiple times. 